Karina Baby. It is 4-23-2020, so it's April 23rd, 2020, and you are 5 years and 13 days old. So let's go into April 23rd, baby. 22nd was the birthday balloons. Twenty third is surprise laundry. One morning, Kitty Kitten, Katie Kitten was helping with the laundry. Miss Perkins filled a big basket with wet clothes of hung out to dry. There were more than usual today. Pa Perkins was helping too. I carry the basket, he said. And I'll help pin up the clothes on the line, said Katie. Katie took the clothespin bag into the garden and handed Pa some pins. They hung the pajamas, pants, those wool sweaters, and a shirt. Those are all my things, said Papa. Then Katie helped Papa to hang up the skirt, the blouse, and the nightgown belonging to Mama. Any more? asked Papa with a smile. When Katie looked in the basket, she got quite a surprise. Oh, right at the bottom was a tiny dress sock. Tiny dress socks, undershirts, and pants. Those look like mine, said Katie, but they're much too small. Oh dear, says Papa. They must have shrunk in the wash. Katie ran inside to tell Mama Perkins what had happened. Mama Perkins laughed. They're usually your clothes, she said. They belong to an old rag doll of mine. I thought I would wash her clothes and just for a moment, Katie looked sad. Who? she asked. Why you, of course, said Mama. Oh. wound up being her clothes after all. Look at tomorrow's a little monkey. That'll be fun. I'm gonna just grab these books today. Look. Carl the frog. Oh, look at him. He's quite the frog. Carl the Frog, written by David and Wells. For my other sunny. Oh. Dots, lots, and lots of dots. Those were the first thoughts of Tiny Carl. And if his brain had been any bigger, he might have asked, When will I be a frog? But for now, he was just an egg, and that seemed like a fine place to start. There he is. Let's see, one morning, zap. Carl awoke with a new thought. What's this? Could it be my tongue? My wonderful aiming snoot snoot. Oh, shooting, snack-catching tongue, but it was only his tail, quite at the opposite end from where his tongue should be. Carl's empty belly was beginning to growl. Oh, baby, he's hungry. Look at that. He's a tadpole. A few weeks later, ping! A tadpole with those could go hop. Oh, he got feet. Look at that. Look at his feet. He could go hop. At last, the time his tongue had come, Carl simply had to try it. Zing! Hum, said Carl. Seems kind of short. That tongue should use a good stretch, said a nasty gnat. Look at that. There's the mat. There's his little tongue. There's his tongue. 
Carl hopped to the nearest tree, hooked up his tongue and stretched and stretched and stretched. Oh, hear that, those thoughts. Carl said he was quite pleased with himself, but hungrier than ever. He did all that time stretching his tongue and now he's just so hungry. How'd it go? asked Mr. Nat, hovering just a hair too close. Pretty good, mumbled Carl. Watch this. Watch this. There he is. He has a little tongue curled up. Has he stretched it? So right. For a moment, Carl was pleased with the marvelous tongue, and he was no longer hungry, but then a new feeling crept over him. Look at that. He goes, Hey! Oh no, he looks scared. Oh, Carl was lonely. Look at him, he's lonely. I have all of his, his other tadpole friends, huh? He's lonely, he's probably hungry. Oh no. Along comes Horsefly. Why so glum? He asked, wisely keeping his distance. I'm lonely, said Carl. I'd happily play cards with you declared the fly if you promise not to eat me i promise said carl oh he made a friend but carl was already getting hungry again oh he's hungry too he wants friends but he wants food look at this he has keys and cards or a book and he has a little horn and a balloon pong a ball pong Let's see. Ah, here they are, explained the gleeful fly. But before he could deal a hand, the rap. Oh no, the rap. Carlo shot out his tongue and ate him. Oh, baby. Oh, you guys, that he is. He's so sad. Whoa, what a tongue, thought Carl, who was no longer hungry. In fact, he felt a little stuffed. But a full tummy and an empty heart made Carl realize that he was now lonelier than ever. I shall never eat another friend, Carl vowed. Oh, but he's a frog though, baby. What do you think's gonna happen? Let's find out. Soon a timid minnow swam by. Miss Fish, croft Carl. Could I join you for a swim? Okay, replied the fish. If you won't eat me, my whole life's ahead of me, and I don't want to miss it. I won't eat you, promised Carl. That would ruin our swim. As soon as he spoke, Carl started to feel hungry, and Miss Fish looked delicious. Oh my goodness, look at Carl. He looks hungry, right? Look at his mouth is watering. And he's watching the fish, and the fish is like, Oh no, he's gonna get eaten. Look at the bird. The bird's not impressed. He's not impressed sitting on, on the pussy willows. Look at this. What's going on? Oh, he's dreaming of food. Look at this. Doo, 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 doo. Oh, he has food on his mind. Poor Carl. He wanted to be happy, he wanted to have friends, he wanted to have self-control, and he really wanted fish for lunch. Mustn't eat my friends, mustn't want to eat my friends, must think about something else. Hmm, playing cards, yes that. Sounds like fun, but what to play? I know, thought Carl, go fish. Go fish is on his mind. Oh no. Carl could no longer resist. Outburst his tongue. Oh, oh, go. Oh, oh, uh oh. Uh oh. Let's see. Look at 
gotta get that poor fish. Uh oh. Carl dragged his bloated self back to the shore and blurted. He was no longer hungry, but he was more miserable than ever. Aww. He's a fool frog, huh? And then a clever kingfisher who's been watching all along dropped in. I'm hungry, the kingfisher said. And you look delicious. And before Carl could respond, whap, the kingfish drove his pointy beak into Carl's feet and narrow miss. A narrow miss. He narrowly missed him. Look how close he is to him, though. Please don't eat me, Carla cried. I'm smaller than you. But you ate the gnat, replied the kingfish, and he was tiny. Oh, look at, look at Carl. He has friends in his mouth. You see the eyes? I'll be your best friend, pleaded Carl. The fly was your friend, the kingfisher said, and still you gobbled him up. But my whole life is ahead of me screamed Carl, and I don't want to miss it. Like Miss Fish, asked the kingfish. Drat this terrible tongue, cried Carl. I don't mean any harm. Honest, I don't. But Carl was trapped. Silly frog, said the bird. If all you care about is getting what you want, all you'll get is what you deserve. Oh, no, he only cares about getting what he wants. What do you think he's going to get? Just then a large bus roared by. Out shot Carl's tongue. Thrap! Carl rocked off faster than any frog has doomed before, twisting and turning and the winding road until at last, whoosh! Look at that, whoosh! And what do you think is going to happen to the poor little frog? Carl's stung, strong-willed tongue grew tired with a blump and a flop and a smack. Carl catapulted into the mud. Car plump. Though he was grateful to escape from the hungry kingfish, Carl now felt worse than ever. Bouncing behind a bus with a belly full of friends can make a frog feel very ill. Oh, poor Paul. Carl opened his very wide mouth, out flopped his fish, out trembled Mr. Fly, out limped Mr. Gnat. Ah, whoosh, ugh. Carl felt much better until he remembered he was lonely and hungry too. Life was so much easier when I was just a tadpole, thought Carl. Yes, yes it was. Poor baby Carl, huh? Let's see. Well, a tiny voice squeaked nearby. Carl looked up to see a tiny ant staring at him in awe. I never saw anyone try to eat a bus before. Look at that ant thinks he tried to eat the bus. Please go away, moped Carl. I wasn't trying to eat the bus. I bet they're real tasty with french fries and ketchup. That ain't said exactly. He was not the smartest of bugs, but he looked Delicious. Oh no, he might be eating the ant next. Oh no, thought Carl as his tongue wound up ready to spring. Rumba away, mumbles Carla. Pressuring his lips to keep his unstoppable tongue in check. I don't want to eat you. But the ant couldn't understand Carl and came closer. Carl closed his eyes and tried to think about not eating the ant. 
but that only made the ants seem tastier. Look at this. Then Carlo remembered the nap and how he missed that sporty little fellow. He thought of the fly and how he sad it was to lose such a playful friend. He thought about the timid Miss Fish and how miserable he felt when she was gone. No, explained Carl. Carl wrapped his tongue around a tree and not around the ants. Uncomfortable as he was, Carl was happy to be tongue-tied for a change. I will not eat you. I would rather had you as my friend, mumbled Carl. Really, you want to be my friend, said the ant. That's great. Want to come to a picnic? A picnic? Uh, okay. Groaned Carl, not quite sure what a picnic was. Can you see him? Let's go on a picnic. To Carl, daylight picnicking was friends turned out to be even better than eating them. And it was certainly more fun. Oh, he went to a picnic with his friends. So to this day, if you ever see ants at a picnic dining with the help of a long-tongued and hungry frog, don't be surprised if it's Carl. Look at that. See Carl? With all of his little ant friends. He has the net there too, and the fish. The kings. The king's bird and the dragonfly over there. Oh, hey baby. And the million of friends he truly deserves. Look at that. All oh, the little fireflies are his friends. There you go. A lot of otters. Mother Moon was looking for her child. Where is my moonlit? Where is? Oops. I like the baby on the boat, baby. The otter took the book. Mother Moon was looking for her child. Where is my moonlit? Where is my little one? She called and called and cried and cried with every tear that fell from her eyes. A star fell into the sea. A lot of utters saw the stars fall. They dove down into the dark. Look at them going after the dark. Down into the deep. They cried the they carried the stars up to the top of the sea. They wrestled and rolled and rubbered the star and rubbed the starlight into the fur. They bobbed and covered and Rippled around, they made such a combination of fight that Mother Moon looked down. Moonlit, my little one, she came running out of her cloud over the dark, over the deep. There she found her child, safe with a lot of otters. In a sea of stars. Oh, baby, I love you. Two cats. Patricia Lee 
text and illustration. The Bernstein's B book. Ba 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 B. Ba 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 B. B. Blue. Blue. Ba ba blue. Ba ba B. The Bernstein's B book. The Bernstein's B book. Ba 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 big. Ba 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 brown. Ba 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 B. Big brown bear. Ba 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 big. Ba 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 brown. Ba 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 bear. Big brown bear. Ba 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 B. Big brown bear. Blue bull. Ba 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 blue. Ba 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 bull. Big brown bear. Blue bull. Beautiful baboon. Beautiful baboon. Ba 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 big brown bear ba 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 blue bull ba 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 beautiful baboon ba 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 blowing bubbles look at her blowing bubbles big brown bear blue bull beautiful baboon blowing bubbles biking backwards ba ba biking backwards Ba 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 bee, big brown bear, blue bull, beautiful baboon, blowing bubbles, biking backwards. Ba 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 bump. Ba 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 bam. Big brown bear, blue bull, beautiful baboon, blowing bubbles, biking backwards, bump, black bugs. Banana boxes. Bop. Big brown bear, big bull, beautiful baboon, blowing bubbles, biking backwards. Bump. Black bugs, bananas boxes, and Billy Bunny's bread basket. Bump. Look at the bunny go. Where's the bunny go? Thump, thump, thump when they walk. Big brown bear with the blue bull and the beautiful baboon blowing bubbles, biking backwards, bump, black bugs, banana boxes, and Billy's bunnies, bread basket, and Brothers Bob's baseball bus. Brothers Bob's. Oh no, what does it say? Bonk! Boom. Big brown bear, blue balloon, beautiful baboon, blowing bubbles, baking backwards, biking backwards, bump, black bugs, banana boxes, and Billy Bunny's bread basket, and Brother Bob's baseball bus, and Buster Bagel's banjo, bang, Bang Pie Bungle Band. And that's what Broke Baby Bird's Balloon. Oh, Baby Bird lost his balloon. Ba 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 B. Red. B, red, B, a uh, yellow, yellow, B, yellow, B, green, green, B, green, shake your G, green, B, pink, how do you do pink? I don't remember, I think, oh, that's pink, right, pink, pink, B, I believe, Pink B. Bubba black. Black, you take your pinch, you pinch it. Go across your forehead. Black. Black B. Black B. 
Yay! We did the bees with the blue balloon and a bee, blue bee and a red bee and a orange or and a green bee and a pink bee and a yellow bee and a black bee 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 bee. Can you be a bee? Brave little fox. Let's see what he's up to. Brave little fox. Animal adventure. Brave little fox. When the time came for Mother Fox to have her cubs, she went looking for a home. Soon she found a roomy hollow at the bottom of a tree. This will be a fine place to raise my family. Mother Fox thought it will be warm and quiet. I am very lucky to have found it. Look at that fox going to the den. Oh, look at her babies. A few days later, just as the newborn cubs were settling down for a nap, a badger family appeared in the doorway. What are you doing in our home? asked Mother Badger. Oh, I'm sorry, said Mother Fox. I didn't know anyone lived here. Mother Badger looked at the tiny sleeping fox cubs and said gently, There's plenty of room here for all of us. You are very generous, said Mother Fox. Oh, she let her stay. Always good to be generous, baby. Mother Fox cared for her cubs in the cozy hollow. Soon the cubs were able to go outside on their own. Would you like to play with me? Little Fox asked young Badger one day. Little Badger nodded happily. Sure, he said. I'll teach you how to play hide and seek. Let's go, said Little Fox. The little young animals scampered off playing in the woods. Aren't they just so cute? You see his face? It's hard to see in the dark. It's kind of dark. There's the little fox. Oh, look at them. Little fox and little badger became great friends. They tumbled into the grass and chased butterflies during the day. At night, they snuggled close together in a cozy hollow. Little fox taught his friend how to leap off the tree stumps. Little badger showed little fox how to dig a sturdy underground shelter. They're learning from each other. They're doing so good. Little Fox tried to teach Little Badger how to catch fish in the moonlight pond, but his friend was frightened of the dark water. I'm not as brave as you are, Little Badger, said the Little Fox. I'm not always brave, Little Fox said. I'm afraid of the eagles that fly over our house. So am I, said Little Badger. Oh, they're both afraid of the eagles. They have something in common. One afternoon, Little Badger was taking a nap, and Little Fox noticed a large shadow on the ground. He looked up and saw the eagle. The powerful bird was heading straight towards them. Little Fox began to bark loudly. Wake up, he called, and Little Badger, it's the eagle. Little Badger jumped up. The two friends ran towards home as fast as they could. They ran towards home. Hooray, shouted Little Fox. I can't keep up, cried Little Badger. Little Fox looked up at the sky. The eagle was getting ready to plunge down on Little Fox. Scampered onto the high rock. He leaped onto the air just as the eagle swooped. Grrr, a little fox growled. The frightened eagle missed the target and was so startled that it flew away. It flew away. Ah, look at that. Look at his little mouth. Little fox expressed expected expected to land on the soft grass but instead he fell into a deep hole his hind legs slipped between the two rocks help he cried he crawled and scampled oh he called he crawled and slippered ground and pulled 
as hard as he could. It was no use. He was stuck. Help! He wailed again. Little Badger's face suddenly appeared at the top of the hold. Don't worry, he said confidently. I'll get you out. Grab my tail and hold tight. And then the strong young badger pulled his friend out of the hole. Oh, they're so useful and so good to each other, right? They save each other. They're so good. They're so good. The two little animals raced home to tell their families about their adventure. Little Fox was very brave and Little Badger, he saved us from the eagle. But I don't feel brave when I was trapped in the hole, said Little Fox. I needed you to pull me out of there. I think we all learned a wonderful lesson today, said Mother Fox. Bravery comes easily when you must help someone you care about. Little Fox and Little Badger smiled both were happy to have a brave and loyal friend. They're so good. They're brave and they're loyal. The most common fox in North America is the red fur and the long bushy tail. So the red fur and the long bushy tail is the most common fox in North America. In the far north, foxes are camouflaged. Their fur changes from brown or gray in the summer to white in the winter. So the foxes blend in with their surroundings. Nature always has something amazing, right? The sand fox lives in the desert. Its huge ears enable it to hear very well. It can even hear insects crawling across the sand. Foxes hunt mainly at night. They're, they eat rabbits, birds, small rodents, and large insects. Foxes also catch food for fish. Oh, fish for food. Farmers don't like foxes because foxes often steal grapes, honey, and chickens. But foxes also get rid of mice, which eat the farmer's crops. Oh, so foxes are useful to the farm. The fox main enemies are the wolves, birds of prey, and humans who hunt foxes for their beautiful fur. Foxes sure do have beautiful fur. Oh, the end. I hope that you enjoyed that, baby. Brave little fox. Brave little fox and good little badger. I wish they had both in the title. Little Animal Adventures. Ready? Who's in the egg? Who's in the egg? Want to find out? Who's in the egg? I'm thinking about eggs, scrambled eggs and boiled eggs, deviled eggs of all kind of eggs, jelly eggs, chocolate eggs, Easter eggs, purple eggs and pink eggs, blue eggs, marble eggs, freckled eggs and speckled eggs, china eggs, darning eggs, nest eggs, eggs in a nest, all kinds of eggs. Here is a small nest. Here are two tiny eggs. What kind of eggs are they? Who put them there? Do you think they're robin eggs, maybe? What kind of eggs do you think they are? Oh, hummingbirds. We laid them there. Don't frighten us away. We must keep them warm. There goes the hummingbirds. Here is the big nest. Here are many eggs. Whose eggs are these? What kind are they? Go away, kittens. Look at the kittens. They're goose eggs. Go away, everyone. These are my babies. What are these? Are they eggs? Are they eggs? Look at them in the bottom. On the bottom. They are my eggs. Frog, frogs lay eggs. Oh, look at the frog eggs. Look at these. They are eggs too. Oh, look at those. See them? They're little tiny circles. Oh, they're fish. Yes, they are my eggs. Fish lay eggs too. They are my eggs. Hi, what can I leave? 
Yes, they are my eggs. Fish lay eggs too. I want... I know what these are. They are eggs. Eggs. They are my eggs. Horns lay eggs. Horns? H-E-R-O-N-S. Herons. Herons lay eggs. Robins lay eggs. And sparrows lay eggs. Pegans and parrots and puffins lay eggs. And so do owls. Birds lay eggs, and so do bees and bugs, and so do wasps. Ants lay eggs. A penguin lays eggs on the ice. A seagull lays eggs on the sand. In the land of the kangaroo, so does the emu. There are eggs in Timbuktu. Here are eggs in a zoo. Who laid these eggs for you? Who do you think laid the eggs, baby? A duckbill platypus. What sort of eggs are these? Ostrich eggs. Here are some old eggs in a pit. They are they dead or fossil eggs? No, very living giant tortoises. And turtles, snakes, and lizards lay eggs, and alligators too. So do their ancient ancestors, dead old stegodinosaurus, Geo Gryobitosaurus, Sad and Sorry Saurus, Alasosaurus, Fish and Frogs and Fowls lay eggs and branches and ha and hatches and branches of, of hatches. Bugs and spiders lay eggs in holes and traps and webs on seams and buds and grasses, on clothes, in closets, and in special cases, in their places. I am thinking about eggs. They are full of surprise. We're not surprised. <laughs> All right, baby. Mama loves, 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 loves you. I love you so very much. I tried to see you today, actually. Today is April the 23rd, 2020, and just know how much your mama loves you. I love you, I love you, I love you, and I miss you, and your papa loves you, too. And, honey, I just love you so, 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 so much. I'll always remember you. Always our rainbow baby, no matter what, honey. Everything Mama did was to try and protect you, okay? Everything, everything, everything. Mama just loves you, and Mamas will sacrifice themselves for, for for their babies, okay? Mama just loves, 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 loves you, and I miss you, and I can't wait to hold you and hug you because I love you so, 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 so much. You are my entire world, my baby. You really are just... Mama just loves you. Mama just loves you. Mama just misses you. Mama can't wait to see you and hold you and rock you and sing to you and just have you and read you books. Okay? Just love you. I hope that you enjoyed the books tonight. And I can't wait to see you soon. I love you, baby.